Hello everyone and welcome to my General Hospital Today channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Gladys obtains an order of protection against Cody and Spoiler sneaks into Ferncliff to visit Sasha. On today's episode of General Hospital, Ms. Wu makes Curtis a proposal, which Marshall declines on behalf of his son. Betty gives Mason and Austin the information they need about Sonny and Pikeman, while Willow receives excellent news. Ava sees Trina at the Metro Court pool and inquires about Curtis' condition. She receives an update from Trina on his health and the fact that they are hoping he recovers the use of his legs. Ava inquires about her plans before the start of class and whether the Chuck has given her a job. They did, according to Trina, but she declined. With everything going on in her personal life and being able to choose her own hours there, she was hoping to return to Ava's gallery. At Ava's gallery, she is always made to feel welcome. Spencer calls out, holding Ace, Hey Trina, you want to join us? From the pool, Ava remarks on how well-matched Spencer and Ace are. Trina advises Ava to see Spencer at home and compliments him on how well he is raising his younger sibling. That must be awkward for Spencer to be spending so much time with Asim, Ava surmises. When Nina gets there, she spots Trina with Ava. She tells Trina she heard Curtis was going to rehab and is confident he will recover. Trina thanks Nina and leaves to go swim with the adorable infant. Why did they need to get together to rejoice? Nina sits and queries Ava. They are commemorating the end of Nina's ordeal, she claims. Nina queries Ava about the nightmare in question. She assumes that this is what happened when she and the two of them were in Sonny's office. Nina claims she is getting married to Sonny, but Ava doesn't want to burden her with the specifics. As Ava puts it, unless the SEC tip comes out. When she finally wants to tell her what is happening, Nina says she knows where to find her and calls her out on her deflecting. Nina departs. Ava takes a G.H. martini. Asim shows in and stands back as Spencer and Trina interact with Ace. Trina acknowledges her concern for her mother. Spencer advises her to visit her mother and, if nothing else, just be there for her. He offers fantastic advice for a boy, according to Trina. After their kiss, Trina departs. Spencer and Trina G.H. are seen by Asim. Asim goes over after Trina has left and remarks that Spencer and Ace appear to be having a good time. She hoped they would still be here after seeing his texts. She invites Ace to go swimming with her after taking off her bathing suit. Esma flaunts her bikini body. Portia sobs as she stares at her wedding picture in her office. Although Marshall hates to bother her, there is a problem with the Savoy, so he stops by. The bartender complains that she is overworked and unable to do all of the job that has to be done. Because Curtis was the company's spirit and heart, according to Marshall, they can't just hire any manager. Marshall asserts that they must preserve the Savoy for Curtis because Portia is aware that he was the Savoy. G.H. Portia difficulty for Marshall. Curtis feels disappointed at the rehab center since he can't get out of his chair like he did yesterday. Roy won't allow him to give up. Selena observes from the entrance. Roy eventually tells Curtis to stop pushing himself excessively with a set of dumbbells since he might cause more harm than benefit. He recommends they should take a break before working out with the resistance bands. After Roy exits, Selena walks in. Curtis G.H. and Ms. Wu. Selena extends her sincere condolences to Curtis. She responds that they need their buddies in situations like this when he wonders why she's here. Curtis responds incredulously, who says we're friends? Of course they are friends, she replies, but she hopes he still views her as a business partner if he doesn't. She is ready to submit a bid for the Savoy. And Wu presents G.H.
Over my dead body, declares Marshall upon his appearance. According to Marshall, Curtis' family will manage the club until he returns. Marshall is advised to consider Selena's offer because operating a club is not for the weak of heart, she says. Curtis tells his father that he can handle Selena as she departs. Marshall says he's sorry for going too far and promises to work with him to keep the club functioning until he can return. Curtis claims that he doesn't know a lot about it and that it is complicated. Marshall believes that by doing this, he is repaying him for providing him with a family. Boy comes back for a second round, and Marshall steps aside to let them pass. Austin is waiting for Michael and Willow when they enter the hospital for a checkup. Michael notices Dex lurking in the background as they are conversing. Austin declares he won't keep them, but is pleased to see how well Willow is doing. Dex follows Austin as he walks away, Michael observes. Willow explains to Michael that this time she is not anxious about getting her checkup, since she knows she will only hear nice things. Austin Michael Willow News GH Michael confronts Dex about following Austin as Willow and Terry are having a meeting. Dex admits Sonny should do the task. Michael is curious about the nature of the employment. Michael interrogates Dex DH. Betty enters as Austin is on his way to his office. He has no idea what the flash drive is until she displays it to him. Soon after, Mason arrives, and Dex follows him to Austin's office. Betty claims to have things for the pikemen. Austin announces that he has completed all tasks requested of him and is leaving as Dex watches from the door. Mason claims that he isn't terminated until the employer does. Drive GH Betty Austin Mason. Portia conducts home remodeling and wheelchair research in her office once more. When Trino arrived with some coffee, she decided that she might use some company. She observes what her mother is viewing on the computer, along with the associated charges. This is just what Portia needed, and she is grateful that she came by. Trina claims Spencer encouraged her to visit to see how she was doing, but the coffee was her idea. According to Portia, she has practically everything Curtis would require on hand and has scheduled a company visit to make sure everything is prepared for him. Installing ramps is not enough, according to Trina, to help Curtis recuperate. Getting Curtis home is the first step, but Portia is aware that it won't be simple. Trina goes to see her mother at GH. The good news is that Willow can go out in public, but it will be some time before she can travel and go to major performances. Willow finds Michael waiting and strolling about the hallways. He encourages them to go celebrate since he's glad she got a positive report. Good news, Willow GH. Asm, Ace, and Spencer are back in the Metro Court pool playing as Ava keeps drinking and observes. Ava remarks that Michael and Willow had just missed Nina when they arrived. Michael remark, lucky us. Willow has been attempting to work with Nina, and Ava hopes they will give her an opportunity. Ava affirms that life is good and that it is great to spread love. Cody and Sam meet in the coffee shop. Cody needs her assistance and thinks they need to take action since Sasha is in danger. Cody describes how he snuck in to visit Sasha, how disoriented she was, and how she freaked out and believed he was trying to kill her. Sam can assist Cody show that she is being drugged since he is certain of it. Cody recounts the entire chain of events that culminated in her collapse, including her desire to revoke Glady's guardianship. Cody goes out to look for the proof as Sam says they still need it. Sam and Cody meet to discuss Sasha G.H. Gladys claims there is an emergency when she speaks with Dante at the station. To prevent Cody from approaching Sasha, she needs a restraining order. Dante invites her to a seat so he can explain what transpired. Gladys describes how Cody secretly entered Ferncliff visited Sasha, and aggravated her condition. When Mac arrives, he finds out that Gladys wants to accuse Cody of stalking. 
Officer Robinson will take care of the paperwork, Mac informs her, speaking with Glady's Gieche this stand. Mac queries Dante about the current problems Cody is causing. Cody's perspective should come first, and Dante cautions against taking Glady's statements at face value. He claims that Cody cares for Sasha and has no malice toward her. Mac understands and goes into depth about his relationship with Dominique and Leopold, including his attempt to save her from a mental facility. Dante recalls when Cody told him that Mac was his father. Cody Mac Dante G.H. Later, as Mac stands there, Cody bursts into the station and starts yelling at Dante, telling him he needs to fulfill his job and assist Sasha. Gladys hurries over, gloats, and presents him the restraining order. Gladys, according to Cody, is the one who belongs in Ferncliff and doesn't give a damn about Sasha. He teases that he knows why, yelling that she only wants her out of the way so that she can manage her money. Glady should feel imprisoned and helpless, he says, lunging at her. Cody puts Glady's G.H. in danger. Cody is restrained by Dante and a second cop, who then bring him into the questioning area as he yells at Glady's. I'll see to it that you pay. Glady's expresses to Mac her desire to have Cody detained. According to Mac, if Cody is taken into custody, Cody's claims against her will be withdrawn and they will need to look into them. If she wants that, he inquires. Gladys acknowledges that you win, but she wants the restraining order to be upheld. She leaves irate. Mac enters the interrogation room and reminds Cody how fortunate he was and how close he came to being imprisoned. What's going on? Dandy asks his friend. Mandy checks on Sasha at Ferncliff and inquires as to what she has been taking. Sasha replies that she isn't sure what they are giving her. When Dr. Montag arrives, he inquires about any issues. Mandy claims that Sasha's actions don't match up with her drug regimen. She requested a blood test because she suspects Sasha is taking medications that are not approved. She deserves praise from Dr. Montag for her diligence but he must be included in any tests because Sasha is currently very vulnerable. He mentions Sasha's recent breakdown to her, but Mandy objects, saying that her psychotic symptoms don't correspond to what seems to be drug use. He claims he will obtain a copy of the blood work despite her assurances that she will. Mandy G. H. Montick. Sasha queries why she feels this way when Mandy leaves. She is allegedly still using illegal narcotics, according to Dr. Montick. She claims she is being offered something and refuses to accept that. He claims that she is having a difficulty and they will help her. Dr. Montick informs Nurse Janice that they have an issue as she comes after being contacted. He claims that Sasha has been the victim of drug smuggling and inquires as to who is in charge of her case. Mandy Green, one of their best, according to Janice, is who it is. As a precaution, he wants her pulled off the case. G.A. stunned as Sasha. Later, Mandy discusses her removal from Sasha's case with Janice. Janice advises not to take it personally because all of the visiting psychiatrists believe they can manage the facility more effectively than they can. Montag is still drugging Sasha. After thanking Janice for taking care of their issue, Dr. Montetic leaves Sasha's room. Sam enters as Janice enters to check on Sasha. Sasha is shouting at Janice to leave her alone and keep away from her as she listens from the door. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.